What's good, y'all? So, y'all might be like, man, why is he chilling like this? Well, that's because God blessed me with a new apartment, and I love my new space. I'm grateful, man. So, just sitting, relaxed, chilling. I don't know if y'all can see my dog in the camera. But, yeah, I'm grateful. I know that this audio in this video right here isn't going to be the greatest because I let Haven borrow my mics, so I don't have my old mic. I've been thinking about getting the DJI one, if y'all know anything about it. Let me know the difference and if it's worth getting. But uh, right here, I just want to give y'all a message. Mm -hmm. Like, first of all, I want to say I appreciate all my loyal subscribers and fans and family, the late face community. I truly appreciate y'all. God bless every single one of you. If y'all don't know God, I pray that you get to know him. And if you know him, I pray you get to know him more. So, I want to give y'all a message because this happened the other day. And God gave me this message to give y'all. So, I'm going to give this one to you. This is going to be my first message back. And it is, uh, this is July 1st, 2023. All right. So, the other day, I'm at my brother's house. He has two daughters and another child on the way. And um, I'm sitting there with my oldest niece. She's seven, I believe. And I'm sitting on a swing. Like, imagine I'm sitting on a swing that's right here. And she's sitting right here. She's in, like, a baby swing. That's her little... I think it might have been hers when I was in Boston. But she was in it, right? And she asked her, like, my brother was up there. He's like, Dad, push me. My brother had to push her. You know, he went inside. The swing stopped going. She's like, Uncle Lincoln, push me. I'm like, Brad, I don't want to get up and push you. Cause I'm, I'm swinging in my swing. So I'm busy working. So you got to think, like, sometimes in life, just, just think about this. It's crazy. It's like a crazy message. And I, this got even more crazy. Because, like, say sometime in life, your family, right? Even though it's your family, they still have missions. All of us have the same purpose to me. If you ask me, I always say that as believers, we always have the same purpose which is to spread the gospel, to make God and his name known. For us to grow closer to him, us to be elsewhere, to him, and us to get, help others get to know more. So all of our purpose is to spread the gospel. What separates us is our calling. And sure, some people might have the same calling, but the calling is what makes you unique. So like me, I'm sitting there and I'm doing work. I'm swinging, I'm pushing myself in the swing. So I'd have to stop my work to get her and push her. Instead of getting up, I kept doing my work and I just instructed her. So what I did was, and y'all remember this, I got this tattoo that says, Fear God is from Proverbs 1 7, which says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So I just told her what to do. I said, Brandon, look, I don't want to push you, but I can do even better than that. And I can teach you how to get the swing going and stay going and stay high the whole time without asking anybody for help. So I told her, I said, while you're sitting there right now, when you put your legs out, like when you kick your legs up like this, pull back on the swing. And when you when you pull your legs back like this, push up on the swing. And she kept doing it and she started a little slow. And you know what I'm saying? She kept going. Then eventually she was up here swinging high again and it was easy. So there's two messages in this one message. God just now gave me this message right here that I'm about to tell you is, like I said, sometimes the people that's closest to you, it's irresponsible for you to make somebody want to stop what they're doing to help you when it's in your power to, to do it, to make it happen. But if they have the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding, they can give it to you so that you can now gain the wisdom knowledge and understanding and you can do it yourself for God. And so they give you the wisdom knowledge and understanding that they got from God, give it to you for God so that you could use it, the wisdom knowledge and understanding yourself for God. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, what else? But this is the other message that I got. This is the one that God gave me the other day while I was sitting there. I'm sitting there, I'm thinking like, all of us, like, I have so much that God's put on my heart to do. From barbering, excuse me, from barbering 
clothing and ministry. It's like the things that God really puts up on my heart to do. And if I really think about it, like, and just do it, it's not that hard. And once I'm in the process of doing it, it's like the start of it is what's hard. The start of everything is always what's hard. Well, being consistent and keep going. But this is what I'm getting at. In business and in, in life and in your relationship with God and in being faithful, obedient, disciplined, and consistent to God and His Word, at first that might be hard. But then once you get the hang of it, once you're doing what you're supposed to do, like take even business for example. You start a business, it's hard at first. The swing, it's, it's hard to get the swing going. But guess what happens? You get the swing going, you've got a good, you know what I'm saying? You've got people who really like your stuff, who really rock with whatever business you're providing. And then, you know what I'm saying? Once you get up here, it's easy. It's easy. You can do other stuff. Now you're swinging like this. Instead of using all your energy to get started, you're up here and now you can handle other stuff. Now you can hold a conversation. You can multitask. Now you don't have to just work on one thing. You don't have to, for example, I'm gonna use barbering because I'm a barber and say the business side. Now I don't just have to work on barbering the whole time because this is steady because I did what I had to do and uh, you know, built the clientele, loyal, consistent clientele. I know I'm, what I'm around, what I'm getting in the shop every week. Um, and then I can work on other businesses. I can work on clothing. I can put more time into ministering and ministry. And, you know, just things like that. Like, it just made me think. It's hard to get going, but once you get going, it's a lot easier. And then it's like once you're disciplined, consistent, faithful, and obedient, it's so much easier. It's so much easier. And I really hope that y'all get something from this message. I know I probably could have gave it better, but this is authentic right now. I literally, this was supposed to be a practice run, actually. So if I end up posting this, then that's crazy. Because I literally put my phone up and press record just to see how I look on this couch. But I just stopped talking. And then God just kept speaking through. So then I just let it happen. But yeah. Um, so my two messages for today. One, if you're the person that's in this swing, that's in the, the big the big swing, that's another one. The Bible says, Proverbs 22, 6, train a child up in the way he, he or she should go. When they're old, they will not depart from you. So that's another one. But if you're in the big swing and you have the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, one, don't just do it for, for the person, just to do it just because you can, because you don't want to enable them. Rather than do something for them, teach them how to do it. You know what I mean? So you do it for yourself for the rest of their lives. And if you're this person, don't expect this person, if you're in the little swing, don't expect the person in the big swing to do it for you. Instead, ask them how they did it so you can replicate it or so that you could get them with an honest understanding to do it and then put the work in. Faith that works is dead, another Bible word. Make sure that you put the work in. Don't just use your faith. Put the work in. To where you can go from being stagnant and still and sitting in one spot to having all the motion. So that's my message for today. I hope that y'all enjoy this haircut. Um Yeah, it's gonna be a great video. Thank y'all for tapping in. Appreciate y'all. Make sure that y'all like, comment, subscribe, and watch through the whole video. This helps me because it puts me in more YouTube's algorithm. It helps me to continue to grow and to reach more people by using the gifts and abilities God has given me to glorify Him and His name, to spread the gospel, and to make Him and His name known. Thank y'all for tuning to the video. Appreciate y'all, man. Let's get into it. I see the before, what I'm gonna go ahead and do it, I'm gonna tie his hair to the top of his head because I wanna get it out of the way. You can see, instead of just letting the dress fall, I tied him up like that. I went with the number one and a half guard with the grain to start the cut. Make sure that you don't cut the dreads or like cut any of the hairs that's in the dreads. 
it's important to comb through that to make sure that you know you separate the dreads from the hair that we're going to cut down as you can see right there but yeah i just got a number one and a half guard and i'm going with the grain and the reason i'm really only i'm really only doing this because i'm trying to get the hairs at the top like where the dreads are to come down right here you can see i took the one and a half i was starting to go up with it i realized how the hair reacted to it i thought it was too light so i threw the two on and now i'm taking the two all the way to the top um obviously right before we get to the dreads and i'm gonna just make sure that it's the same length all the way around just going over everything multiple times ensuring that i give myself a nice foundation to be able to fade into and you know like i said all the hairs are the same length at this number two guard make sure that you're combing while you're cutting or brushing it's very important because it's like when you when you cut or when you fade you push the hair up so you got to brush it or comb it back down to make it lay in this natural position this is gonna be a great video for beginners right here basically I'm asking him what he wants to do and if he wants to do a taper or fade all the way around I think and then I asked him did he want C cups he said yeah so I'm gonna start in the back and the reason I start in the back because I don't I want to the way his head was shaped I didn't want to take the fade too high now I'm gonna meet the front to the back. And like he said, he still, he wanted a C cup. And the reason I'm starting to cut with my lever closed with my clipper is because I feel like it's a good technique for beginners. If you're having a hard time taking out that bottom line, then this is gonna be a great technique for you to try out. This is like, this is what I did to be able to first start taking out my bottom line to get confident. You can see what I pointed at the back of his head. He has like that dip in the back of his head. So we do not want to take the fade over that dip. Not too much higher than that. And then I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. And if y'all heard that, that was my dog. He just coughed. All right. So to start the fade, I have my lever open with my babyless low pros. And I'm going up probably like three quarters of an inch. And you can see that I'm... At first, to establish my guideline, I'm gonna flick out. Once my guideline's established, like it is now, I'm gonna lay my blade flat and go to the top of the guideline. Next, I'm gonna close the lever halfway and go halfway up that guideline. Then I'm gonna close the lever one more notch and tap that bottom line. And it should pretty much take it out since we're using, since I used the uh, lever closed to start the fade. And now I'm gonna close it all the way and just tap that bottom line. Then I'm gonna do just a little detail work lever plan. And just pick in certain spots. Once you get to the point where you understand how to fade and then you're able to do detail work while you're cutting, it makes your cut so much more efficient. And this is one technique that I recommend for y'all. I like to do what I just did. So I did the, the front of the head to like behind the ear. And then from behind the ear to the back of the head, I always fade like this because it just, it's a nice structure to your fade and it just keeps your fade organized. It makes you remember what you're doing and where you're going with the fade. And usually I would do this all the way around the head, but for the purpose of the video, to be able to record content, to be able to help y'all, I will do one side and then I do the other side. Now I have my number one guard on and I say I'm going up probably like a full inch with this guideline. And I'm just going over everything multiple times because it's giving me a line, but it's not going to be too much since we went up with that too close. It's not going to be too noticeable, especially you see how like toward the front of his head is like real kind of light and then toward like behind the ears, it's like darker and more dense. It has more hair there now i'm going to close the lever halfway go halfway up that guideline making sure that i just go over everything even if it don't feel like it's cutting i'm gonna go over it because i know that it is then i'm gonna close my lever all the way and tap that bottom line now i'm doing the same thing with the back So 
now this should be the last step to the fading process i have my one and a half guard besides doing the detail work i have my one and a half guard and i'm just blending up since we we left off with a two close so this one and a half open to close i'm gonna take it open to right under where we left off and every time i close it i'm gonna move down on the fade and just pull the fade together and you can see it's doing it now so i had a blade all the way open right now i'm gonna close it halfway and i'm just moving down a little bit more on the fade now i have it closed all the way and I'm tapping that line and it's okay if it doesn't take the line out completely because I can always come back with my number one open the close and just you know do some detail work but that's what I'm doing right now right now I'm pretty much honestly I'm doing detail work with my one and a half guard I look at the one and a half guard and the zero guard as detail guards i never take i never put lines in with them i only take lines out with them so to me personally the one and a half guard and the zero guard are detail guards so now i had a zero guard on and literally i'm just gonna hit this bottom line and i'm gonna start with the lever open and just work my way close so i'm gonna hit the bottom line with the open see if it does anything if it doesn't i'm gonna close it halfway hit it see how that air, hair reacts then I might open it or close it. You know, never you never know. With detail work, detail work is this. Lever play, so opening, closing your lever or your blade when need be, and corner work, using the last couple teeth of your blade or the corner of your blade to pinpoint dark spots, bring them to the light, and make the fade as smooth as possible. And the zero guard, I didn't really like what it was doing, and I just like the soft touch that uh, the Andes Masters blade gives. And I really like just coming in and doing detail work with the master's blade. So that's pretty much what I'm doing here. Notice how I'm keeping this fade under this bump in the back of his head. And now, since we didn't bought it out at first, I'm going to bought it out with my babyless low pro. I said low pros. My babyless gold FXs. Making sure that I don't go up too high. You know what I mean? This is like, you gotta be focused while you're doing this too, because you don't wanna dig into your fade and then have to raise your fade again. So make sure that when you come back and clean up like this, you don't uh, go too high with it. And you might even have to use the last couple teeth of your blade or the corner of your blade to uh, make that line come out completely. So I have number one and a half guard on because I know how his hair cuts with the one and a half guard and that's what I cut his front down with. Combing everything through. Since he hasn't had a cut in so long, I'm combing everything through and uh, you can see that fade butter. I don't know what I'm talking about right now. I'm talking to Haven, but I'm talking about something. Hey man, I don't know why bro was doing, dude was doing this with his eyes, man. If you watch this bro, he was tweaking for this with your eyes but god bless you next time please though you get cut by me again just close your eyes all the way man but right here y'all i'm just tapping the bottom of his beard making sure that i give it a nice fit to his face look at the structure of the face and just think about what would fit his face the best and then give your client that if they give you the option to do that which he did now with his mustache i'm just gonna tap it in nothing too crazy not too skinny, not too thick. Just has a mustache in. But back to like, when it comes to the client giving you the free range of just doing what you want, make sure that you really take time and think about the haircut and the beard or facial hair. So whether, whether it's the haircut or the facial hair, make sure that you think about what you're gonna do. So with the lineup, I like to start in the front and work my way to one side. And for this side, I am right-handed, but I like to use my left hand just because I feel like it helps me to keep that line straight, like in the angle of it. I feel like it just helps better. Then once the front meets the side, I'm gonna tap in the vertical bar. I'm gonna do the same exact thing on this side, just making sure that they match up 
make sure that when you do line up, you don't push them back. You can see that his hair is super light. Like you literally look at it right now and see how light it is. But you don't have to push it back to where it's dark. Just keep it in the area where he still has hair. Even if it's a little thinner, keep it there. Think about the longevity. He got to live a longer life, man. He's trying to preserve people's hairline. But it's the same thing on this side. So once the front meets the side, I'm going to tap in the vertical bar. Then after I had both vertical bars, after I had the front line up and the vertical bars tapped in and established, then I'm going to work on the C-cup. With the C-cup, I'm going to start at the bottom of the vertical bar. And I'm going to tap it in. Then, so right here, I'm going to start at the bottom of the vertical bar. I'm going to tap my line in. Then I'm going to go to like the bottom of the C-cup area where I can see the hair growing. What you're about to see, hold on. See what I'm saying? You see that hair right there growing? So I'm going to tap it in just so I can see it. And then I'm going to meet the two in the middle. You don't got to dig in. You don't got to do nothing crazy. Just... Boom, boom, meet him in the middle. Look at that, clean, crispy. Man, my tremors hit, ain't they? Y'all can see, man, this is before enhancements. You can't say anything. Clean, before enhancements. I really like that. Glory to God. Right here, y'all, I'm taking, I'm, I use Kiss Express for my spray, and then I got my Sean Cunt's hair. Uh, 245 plus card, and you know, using it for my handsomes. I like this card. This is actually Major's card. I had lost mine, but shout out to Major, man. Shout out to Haven in the background. Right here for my fibers, I use BJ Cuts fibers. Um, you can look them up if you don't know who he is. This is what Haven put me on. I like them. I like how they do. But basically, the reason I use fibers is. The spray, so the kiss makes like a shine. With any spray, I feel like it makes a shine. So I put fibers on to make it look more realistic. But I'm not one of the barbers who like super, super dark enhancements. I still want a natural look to the enhancements. So I have been using a pencil a lot more recently. Uh, I used it a few years ago a lot. You know, I put it down just cause. This is the extra, but man, Major been using it, and sometimes I feel like I gotta use it just cause. But make sure that when you, after I put my fibers in, I comb them through to make sure that, you know, everything natural looking as possible. And then when you line the fibers up, make sure you line them up in the line you already have established. Don't push the line up back, trying to line the fibers up crispy. Just Line the fibers up where you already have the line up naturally and clean. With my um, beard work, y'all, you can see I like to go ahead, put a little rough draft in at first, wipe it off, clear the cheek of any excess hair, and then I like to go back in and do my real um, official line. Shout out to Crispy Cuts for the razor. Fear God tattoo in Hebrew. You see it on the wrist, man. Right here, I'm just doing some uh, razor work for y'all, but I know y'all can't really see it, but still. Shout out to Toodle for the beat. Y'all know I gotta say this in my video. I'm humble at Jesus' feet. Without Jesus, I'm nothing but a filthy rag at the side of God and I can't do anything. With Jesus, I am the righteousness of God and I can do all things. Um, yeah, man. Grateful. Y'all see the cut, man. Let me know what y'all think about this video. I hope that you really learned something from this video and enjoyed it. Not only the cut, but more and most importantly, the message. So... Let me know what y'all think about both of them. The message and the cut. I think both of them was very good. You can see Butterfade. Man, God can literally use anyone. Teach you. Make sure that you're listening to him at all times. And being faithful, obedient, disciplined, and consistent to God and his word. If y'all came to my channel because you like watching barber videos because it's satisfying, I hope that this video satisfied you. 
if you came to learn something, I hope I hope that you take something from my game, apply it to yours, and advance in your career, in your craft, and in your life. And if you came for the message, I hope that it reached you and touched your heart, your soul, your mind, and your body. Thank y'all for tuning into the Lake Show. Hope to see you back on the next video, and God bless. Alright, so that wraps it up for this video. I hope that y'all enjoyed the video and that you learned something from the haircut part, but more of what's important. I hope that y'all took something and learned something from the message. And today's video is sponsored by Self Cut Systems. Perfecting self grooming. Self Cut Systems, I just want to say this. I'm sorry that I, I just want to apologize and say I'm sorry that I didn't deliver on everything I said I was going to as far as the other stuff that we talked about, but you know, I did make the video of me doing a self cut, and I know that y'all, you know what I'm saying, you showed love for that. And you showed love by sending um, the other mirror with the lights and this mirror. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna give this mirror away to help promote your brain instead of doing the other thing. So, and no, they didn't tell me to do this, I'm just doing this. So if you want this mirror, it literally pulls out, these things pull out like an antenna, they hook to the back of the door or a tree if you're outside, whatever you want to hook it to. I low key probably to keep it, but I'm just going to be nice. But it is very convenient. Like, come on, man. I didn't even know. I didn't even, I didn't even mess with this because I had the other one and the other one got the lights. But anyway, today's video is sponsored by Self Cut Systems once again. If you want to give yourself, if you want to get yourself right, you know what I'm saying? Good. Like I said, you can put this anywhere that you can hang these. You can put this. Or if you have a shelf and you want to put it like, you can put it. Man, what's up? Thank you. God, that was good. Um, what's that? If y'all want this, comment self cut systems. And you got a chance to win this mirror. But once again, shout out to self cut systems. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate all y'all for tuning into this video. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. And um, yeah. appreciate y'all. God bless you.